going on, everybody? Bobby Fye here, flying solo today. I'll be live uh, at 6 Eastern uh, for the slate. We got a nice Tuesday slate for a change, seven games. Should be a lot of fun. Um, sorry about yesterday. Had a family thing come up, and thanks for Rody for covering for live. Uh, I'll get all my stuff up today, though, and uh, early looks, all that stuff, but I'll probably do it a little bit later because I think there's going to be some news that might affect tonight's slate. So with that said, we're going to quickly go game by game and talk about potential plays. Um, I think this is an interesting one, this first one right off the bat, Indiana, Chicago. On the Chicago side, it's harder to find something that I feel really great about. Like you have the the same thing we always have, the rotating all these guards who or in the, you know, the three to four K range that I just, I just, I don't feel like incredible about, but you still have white to Sonmu and Caruso. I, I probably skip those guys. I do think DeMar DeRozan is a really strong play. And I do think Levine is a mediocre play. Um, I like DeRozan though at nine K. I think it's very reasonable. And I bring it up because I do want to run back some of the stuff on the other side. And just right off the bat, like, um, excuse me, going back to Indiana, like you have it, you have pretty crazy value for uh, McConnell. He's projecting. I mean, SS has him ahead of everybody else, but like he's projected at forty fantasy points at sixty one hundred. Obviously, that's going to be a priority play. And I think that mixing in guys like Nee Smith, especially, I uh, like Miles Turner in this matchup. Um, and I think that uh, I think that Matherin and Heald are make good for good tournament plays. But I think this is an interesting game to stack right off the bat. Uh, most preferably, like with two or three from Indiana, maybe a Nee Smith McConnell, one of Heald or Matherin with DeRozan. It's a really viable route to go today. So I do like this game right off the bat. Moving over to Boston, Miami. Um, let's get this cleared out right. Sorry, I'm working from my laptop today, not on my home setup. So it's a little bit, uh, a little, you're gonna have to bear with me just a little bit. All right, here we go. Let's talk about the uh, Celtics. I think that, you know, it, it's, it's, it's the, the Brogdon play is going to be somewhat semi popular today. I, I, I don't even know if that's actually going to be true by the time the day is done, but I think it's kind of interesting. You have Horford doubtful today, you have Smart who's doubtful. And it does make sense for Brogdon. Um, I think I might be just as in interested in going to Derek White instead. I'm curious how the starting lineup shakes out, so I'm really going to have to wait on C on that one. Don't think I'm going to get to Robert Williams either way, although I think he's always fine for tournaments. This isn't the kind of matchup I want to use him in his skill set um, at 5,800. So not a ton of interest in this game overall for me, but I do think you could certainly make an argument for some of those other pieces from Boston. Um, I mean, then you get down to uh, you know the, the spend-ups. I don't think you're going to end up... I just I, I just can't seem to quite find a way to to play these guys at 11-1 uh, Tatum and 94 for Jalen Brown, even though in in a in a good matchup, I think I would be interested, but I just don't think I want to against Miami. On the Miami side, I think Jimmy Butler is a terrific tournament play today. In fact, I'm actually going to put him as a priority. I don't care that they're all healthy when they need it, when they need him in tough games. These are the times where he shows up. And uh, I'm going to say Jimmy Butler is a tremendous play on the other side of this game. So he's my favorite, my favorite option. I also think that we have to, we're going to have to start thinking about Lowry while he's in this price tier. 4,800 is a little bit, a little silly. So I'm, uh, I'm okay with taking shots on Lowry or Bam, but I, I really am high on Butler today. In the Cleveland, New York game, um, on the Cleveland side of things, oops, on the Cleveland side of things, uh, Nothing that really jumps out. Maybe you can talk me into Rubio getting some extra minutes. Um, maybe you could play Mobley at 6,900. I think that's 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 totally fine. Uh, Donovan Mitchell is supposed to be back tonight. Uh, that's I, Everybody else just looks like fine to me. Obviously, if anybody's out, that, that would open things up a little bit. I think a long shot play on Kevin Love, I wouldn't mind it, but not not anything I'm, I'm prioritizing in this, not on the Cleveland side. On the Knicks side, it's a little tricky with the big man situation. I do think Jericho Sims is 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 the desirable one of the two, but I, I don't. I mean, well, I don't even say one of the two. He's he's certain he's a much better play as of right now from what we've seen than than Hartenstein is. But Toppin could st still gets minutes, and it just gets a little frustrating. They should have to play a little bigger in this game, but they already have Randall in there for a million minutes anyway. So. I'm not really finding a way to get to a ton on the Knicks. I think that RJ Barrett might be my favorite play. Um, and I think that Jericho Sims is okay for a, a large field tournament play, especially because he has felt forward eligibility and we have some center values that we're going to have to talk about. On the In the Denver-New uh, Orleans game, should be a really good game pace-wise and everything. I, I like the price on Michael Porter Jr., assuming that he plays. Um, I think Jokic is obviously always a tremendous play. 
but uh, nobody who I feel like on this slate is is standing out. Which in a game that I that I like, and they're not going to be owned, you might want to try to force in a you know some Porter, some Murray, some Jokic lineups just because of the game environment. It should be really strong. These are two of the best teams in the West with a big total, and uh, I, I like the idea of trying to get exposure to this game, even though I don't have individual plays that stand out as being great plays on either side. I think McCollum is completely reasonable at 8,200. I have no problem with that. I don't think I'm going to get to Valanchunas at 6,900 and everybody else just sort of looks okay to me, but it's a game that I might revisit later today because I do like the potential game stackability of it. Washington, Dallas, you got a little Chris stops, uh, Chris stops revenge, but no Chris stops. Um, So doesn't it's not gonna it's not gonna make much of a difference i think we're supposed to to find a way to do something here i'm a little surprised that even with beal back like with no chris stops i know that we haven't seen it yet and and i'm just gonna take a quick look and see what we have on beal for minutes only 30 uh if we feel like there's some upside and that's something i'm gonna have to dig a little bit further into i think that at 7300 he's reasonable and i think that kuzma at 7900 is reasonable not an ideal matchup obviously but both those guys Definitely makes some sense to me. Um, not quite to being on my core playlist, but they're both interesting. On the uh, on the Dallas side, I do think as a spend up, Luca would be my preferred option. Um, he's just consistent. He's puts he has the highest ceiling. He has the most realistic, I would say, even outside of maybe Jokic is close high, highest floor. But uh, if you can find a way to get him today, I certainly think that he's a reasonable play. And then DFS is still cheap at forty two hundred. I don't mind that. I don't mind Hardaway Jr. and I don't mind Dinwiddie, but I, I I would be trying to get to Luca in this game and maybe run it back with either Kuzma or Beal. Charlotte Phoenix. Um, am I missing something with the score? The, 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 I don't know why the projection has Charlotte as a seven point favorite. I know that's not what they actually are, but even Saberson having it as that, even with the Phoenix missing people, like it seems a little bit a little bit strong. Um, Charlotte being favorite over anybody always, especially on the road on a back to back, doesn't ever seem to make a lot of sense to me. I'm curious if Charlotte sits anybody on the back-to-back. Um, Gordon Hayward's price is, is appealing. Uh, Terry Rozier is interesting if there's no Lamelo, Lamelo is officially questionable. I don't think I'm going to get to Lamelo even if he plays. And uh, not really getting to a lot on the Charlotte side of this one, with the exception of Mark Williams. Um, they're giving him more minutes. They're, the, the problem is if he gets too high ownership, I think you can jump off of it. But as of right now, I think that's one of the best values in the slate. And I think that you're going to play the center on the other side of this game. So you're going to, if you if you lock up your utility spot with your centers, um, I think there's going to be a lot of Williams and Biombo lineups out there. And I think that that's completely fine. But uh, by six eight by six, maybe we'll have some other stuff that's that's better value. I, I do like Williams a lot in general, and the fact that they're starting to give him some run does have me interested. Um, so I'm going to keep trying to trying to be overweight on him. Uh, don't love that he's going to be really popular tonight. This is a pretty straightforward situation with Phoenix. You want to, this is the game like you can, you you know, you can try to stack by finding some of those, you know, the Williams or maybe, maybe the, um, the Hayward play or, or Rozier. If there's no, uh, certainly if there's no LaMelo, then he stands out and this game becomes a great game stack. But as of right now, I'm not like overwhelmingly in love with the Charlotte side, but I do think you're going to be wanting multiple pieces from the Phoenix side. Um, Cam Johnson's minutes are kind of come back up a little bit. I love him at 5,100. Uh, Biombo, I like it that, you know, is the obvious, you know, best value on the slate uh, as of right now. Just keep in mind that you might see some Sarich minutes at center and keep in mind that Lawndale might end up getting it back. So I, I'm going to prioritize Biombo for now, but that may turn into Lawndale later to get off of the, uh, off the chalk. And there's no reason why it couldn't be a Lawndale game instead, except for the Dario Saric, who is already in play up as a power forward in his own right, but he may end up getting real life center minutes. Chris Paul, I think, is completely reasonable, especially if you want to stack this game. I like the price. I like the the price. Um, Phoenix has struggled, and they've kind of needed him. So Chris Paul, Cam Johnson, uh, then Tory Craig, then Sarich, in that order of my interest after Biombo. But I think I'm going to end up playing some Lawndale tonight. Uh, TBD. We'll we'll see we'll see how things shake out. But as of right now, that's that's one of my my favorite pivots on of the night. Lakers are playing the, the Clippers for some reason they can never beat. Um, the Clippers, I mean, look, Paul George's price at 8,600, that's extremely reasonable to me. Uh, you do have Kawhi at 10-1. N- nobody who I have is like a massive priority, but I do think Paul George is a good place to spend money. Um, he plays well in these matchups. Uh, it's, a, it's obviously like the nuts going against the Lakers, so I do like him. I'm okay with the Batum play as well. Um, I'm a little concerned whenever he gets too popular but the minutes have been pretty decent and they're trying to win games 
So I do think Batum is going to be a guy I might use. I'm not sure how I'm going to check this, this Laker Clipper game yet. I think it also is going to be a little bit is, is going to be stackable. Um, but I think that Paul George and Batum are my two favorites. And as of right now, not really getting to a lot else on the Lakers side of it. Uh, you, you, yeah, we could do the Pat Beverly thing and just beat our head against the wall. Um, it is his former team. They probably get extra minutes because they want his defense out there. Uh, so I'm okay with it, but I, I certainly wouldn't be trying to go out of my way to, to build Pat Bev lineups. Uh, I like Westbrook in this matchup. I, I do think that it's uh, 8,300. It's We know there's, there's some volatility with Westbrook, but I think he's totally reasonable today. And then LeBron is questionable. Assuming that he plays... Um, if for any reason he doesn't and you played a guy like Westbrook, at least then you have like some extra outs, as we say, because uh, because, you know, you'd obviously want Westbrook if LeBron is out. But obviously Westbrook, even with LeBron in, is a pretty strong play, I think. Um, so, yeah, good game, but I, I can't quite figure out how I want to stack it yet. I'll have more for that more on that one at six. I'm going to stop my share now and just sum it up really quick. Um, but before I do, uh, the, the Josh Green thing for Dallas is probably one I'll avoid. But the other value I'm actually on board with for for who's being rated as the best value I'm going to have to decide what to do with Avdia because I think that he's interesting, but I don't think that it's like an automatic play. And I thought he was going to be a little more popular. So I actually was trying to talk myself off of it. But a lot of these guys who are we're getting value from, I guess that's sort of like one of the things I want to point out. There is some volatility with, you know, Cam Johnson. You've got high ownership on guys like Neesmith and even Dorian and Finney Smith, who we've seen play 40 minutes and have like five fantasy points before. They just I don't feel like I love the value maybe as much as others do. The, the top value is obviously Biombo and Williams. I think you have to sort of prioritize them right now, but I don't think you're going to necessarily have to by when we hit six Eastern. So I look forward to seeing you guys all then. Thanks for tuning in for a quick, quick look at the a first look at this, but uh, hope everyone's doing well and look forward to catching up with you guys at six Eastern. Good luck, everybody.